Twyla, you get people, especially dancers, to do the most incredible things. And they're always so filled with joy once they've reached that place. And I really think that that skill, that motivation, that place you take people to is so important for everybody to kind of find in their lives. We all want to make lifestyle changes. We all want to do things for ourselves for the better. But how we do it is the big black hole that people don't know. What do you do? What are you thinking about when you're motivating or motivating yourself? Slight realism. Not too much, just enough. You've got to be realistic about what people do. And this is a good thing because everybody is very different. So it has to be seen as a positive thing, not that they cannot do something, but that they can do something. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing is to uh, lift the bar as high as possible because everybody wants to be challenged. And when people are challenged to, to work, they do better than when they're not. What are you thinking when you're challenging them? I mean, what, how do you lay At it At that out? moment in time, I love them. Oh. I'm not thinking. I love them because of the potential in them, because of their possibilities. And so they're feeling this. They're, they're understand, they're getting that so. feeling of love. That, that I'm concerned to see them be the best that I can understand for them. So you believe in someone, you have a sense that they have potential to go somewhere. But then you pick up that they don't feel that. Something I fire happens. them straight away. <laughs> <laughs> so it, do you really think that if they're not feeling it, then that's not, it's just not going to happen? No. Uh, I, A, might have had a wrong idea uh, in how they resist or don't accomplish, accommodate that idea. I might learn something about uh, what's a better approach uh, and uh, get an idea that I would never have had. I try to be as straight as I can be, as early as I can be. Okay. There's, there's no point in duplicity here. Mm -hmm. We all want the same thing or we don't. Right. And if we don't either, we can get to a place where we can work together or we can't. Mm -hmm. And so there's no point in trying to sustain something that's not going to mm -hmm. work. That's called denial and it's very costly and exhausting. I think people really want to change their lives and they want to be better dancers and they want to be more of their dream, um, but sometimes their self-esteem gets in the way and they, it, it kind of def redefines what they want. And how important do you think self-esteem is in the whole thing? It, it, can it be kind of pushed aside if someone doesn't have great self-esteem and still achieve things, or is it, it, does it get in the way permanently? Self-esteem is a, a strange word. It has many gradations going from white to black. Uh, and, uh, and there can be arrogance, which is usually uh, connected to insecurity. Uh, you, it takes a lot of patience to not just attack but to understand right. that that person is actually insecure right, and we right. need to draw them forward. Mm -hmm. So that's one problem with self-esteem. When people have very low self-esteem, chances are they're not going to be a top class dancer already. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be working right. with them because unless you, one feels gifted, it's too long a, a, a road and it's a lot of work. And mm -hmm. if you're going, if the worker is going against the stream, it's almost not worth yeah. it. You have a list of accomplishments. Um, you've done so many things in your life. You're the perfect example for people to want to know how, how did you get this done? In, and I know you still feel you have tons to do and tons to accomplish. And, and so how do, you, how do you make it work? How do you make things happen in your life? Basically, it's, uh, for me, it always is physical discipline. Uh, whenever I work on a project for a long time, uh, uh, very hard, I will be somewhat out of shape. And I will get, as anyone does, depressed. So the first thing I have to do is put myself into gear and get back into shape. Get on a good diet. Really do it. Get regularly, same hours same gym, 
when I'm working myself uh, to not stop short. Mm -hmm. And it feels like shit. But you <laughs> do it because each day, you know, if you haven't done it the day before, right. you got nowhere to launch from. So there are certainly times when I'm down. When you're not down, then it's easy. You're in a groove. So you just keep going. That's a different kind of mm -hmm. self-motivation. But uh, ultimately, um, uh, for an artist, uh, there are all these periods where you, there's only a vague sense of the vision, what really is important here. And that's when it's the most difficult, and there is a great temptation to genuinely loathe yourself <laughs> at that point in time. Right. And uh, it, it's ultimately, you just have to go, wait a minute, wait a minute. If I'm not ready when something good comes to the head, I won't be able to pounce. Mm -hmm. So let's just get ready and not expect that we know where we're, we're going. We're just getting right. ready for it. And you've written three books. And in the, in the three books, there's a lot of demonstration of how you fulfill a dream and how you structure your, your life to do that. Part of what you talked about was stay in good health, be physically fit, help the mental with that. What else do you, do you think about in that process? Uh, I think it's very important to um, be... Con I, the, whenever I have a conversation with anybody, it's, it's, usually it starts with, so what's new? The new has a kind of vitality. It's not that the old does not have vitality. We're all classicists sitting here, mm -hmm. right? So the, sometimes mixing and matching uh, will generate a kind of energy that's a fresh that's mm -hmm. a fresh energy. Between the the two last books, in between the creative habit and the collaborative habit, I read five or six uh, 19th century novelists in depth. That would be Tolstoy, Dickens, oh <laughs> Balzac, George Eliot, uh, and Proust. He's not really 19th century, mm -hmm. he's really 20th century, but anyway, the, the in depth, which is to say everything they wrote, uh, at least one biography about them, their journals, their letters. Oh, God. No, it's it's. If you want to understand these things, it's 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 depth pursuit, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they become your best friend, uh, and they're very good friends to have uh, because and their style and way of doing things is very informative, and the amount of discipline that each one of them had mm -hmm. in doing their work is, in fact, the magic word inspirational. Right. So, you know, now having uh, familiarized myself to some extent with these writers, I'm uh, now Henry James. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. So, discipline. I mean, that's, that's the magic word. It, it has to do with uh, demanding that you can accomplish more than is easy. Mm. This is not f friendly. This is not user-friendly. We're not talking user-friendly mm -hmm. here. Right. Uh, and it, it means people sometimes suffer and sometimes feel angst over it, in, but in an in, in inspired way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, there the has sweating to, and, and totally. there has the to be, adrenaline. There has to be enough payback all the time mm -hmm. or the body won't do it. Uh, so the, you, you, there, there's the choice to be disciplined in an area where you can succeed. Mm -hmm. And if you have a dream that is outside that area, you should readdress that dream. That's the beginning of discipline. And then, then discipline makes sense mm -hmm. to do. And it becomes a natural part of life. It's not an enforced thing. You can't enforce discipline, mm -hmm. ultimately, any more than you can enforce heart. You yeah. can't expect your mind to work if your body is uh, under the point where it could accomplish more. Mm -hmm. the, the brain is only a part of the body. The chemicals in food obviously have an incredible effect on our bodies. But what, um, what I'm impressed about about you is any time we've had dinner at your house, you're the, the simplicity of the food. The food is healthy. It's real Basic. stuff. It's not processed. It's no. not... It's, it's the same rules as ever. Cook it as little as possible to be able to chew it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and salads. And salad, yeah. fresh fruit, fresh, fresh, mm -hmm. very important. Uh, food loses its vitality, obviously. I do two kinds of exercise, which I am more and more interested in. One kind of exercise is what we call training, is consistency, uh, is uh, the, the sort of disciplining that an athlete goes through to get to an event. They know every day how it's got to be programmed and exactly how many calories and so on and so forth. 
that's one kind. The other kind is what we uh, modern dancers used to call improvisation, mm -hmm. wherein we don't have the vaguest idea what comes next. No idea whatsoever, mm -hmm. as far away from training as you can be. It's a totally wide open arena. Mm -hmm. Anything goes. With training, very little goes, mm -hmm. and less and less goes the closer you get to the goal. And to entertain these two extremes, I think is extremely important. You ha I find that I, uh, in order to continue with this routine, which is deadly, mm -hmm. uh, because it can be so consistent, which is where it's most productive for the body. The body needs consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, it also has to be afforded with the, uh, the vague idea it can do anything. Mm -hmm. So now let's go try anything. And what does anything look like? Simultaneously, it, these two so things. So, do you think that's how you started to develop your style as a dancer, as originally, and as a choreographer? Absolutely, because I was fortunate in having had a mother who insisted on complete discipline. So we got that out of the way. By the time we were ten years old, we were disciplined. Mm -hmm. Okay, then from there it was about breaking the discipline down. Some of the new technology that you're using um, in creating dance and putting putting pieces together. How did that come about? I mean, what, what was the inspiration? How did you go fly off into that world? Well, partially it's circumstantial, as so much that's really important often proves to be. I grew up in a drive-in theater, so I was always familiar with information in a two-dimensional format. That, we, could, we gotta go back a little bit. Do you we? grew up in a drive-in theater. I grew theater. up in my, my parents owned a drive-in theater, and I started oh working there. You didn't know this? I started <laughs> working at the drive-in when I was eight years old, oh for Christ's sake. In Southern California, I did this until I went away to college. I car hopped, I made popcorn, <laughs> I you know checked out cars that were sneaking in the back gate. <laughs> Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, I helped, I didn't help, I helped change the marquee, my, my mm -hmm. mother did the booking, I mean, she ran the place, so I learned how this that business operates. So I also learned when people get bored, because during a movie, whenever there was a slow part, everybody made a rush to the snack bar and I had to get in there first, so that's where <laughs> I learned all about theater. Very, very interesting. It's all practical. Yeah. Everything is pragmatic, yeah. ultimately. So, so then the technology. Right. So two dimensions. So it was always for me about film. It's always been about cinema. Mm -hmm. It was never really about live theater. That was the second best mm -hmm. that was more available to women in the 60s. There were no female right. directors in the 60s. Forget it. So. Um, then, uh, in thinking about uh, film, obviously, when I began to work, I couldn't afford film cameras. Film's very expensive. But bit by bit, uh, video became a possibility. Uh, and in 69, I got my first, it was a secondhand Panasonic system that the camera was about that big, the deck was about that big, the tripod was about <laughs> that big, the sound was separate, and it was about that big, mm -hmm. and I carried it all myself. Nice. Okay. <laughs> And uh, nonetheless, I knew that here were not only two dimensions, but there were two dimensions into the fourth dimension, namely posterity, which dance otherwise would not have. Right. 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 So I started uh, videotaping in the 60s wow. uh, and have continued to do so. Uh, so that uh, now with the web technology, it's a very different thing. In other words, I have all this documentation. In fact, I have uh, four decades of improvising, which is, this is the first time any wow. dancer has ever had wow. this kind of library from the time when I was in my early 20s until now. Uh, and what I can do obviously has altered and changed a lot. How I think in movement has altered and changed mm -hmm. a lot. And how to access this material and make it so that it has its own life mm -hmm. apart from just in the can, these reels, as it were, mm -hmm. they're not really reels, but anyway. Right now with, with the show on Broadway, there's this incredible combination of this historic man, Sinatra, these dancers doing the most athletic, modern, sexy, I mean, it's every every word, all of their movements, and then you have a live orchestra and this digital Sinatra who seems to be there. 
uh, it's awesome. And everybody just gasped at where you've taken them and, and how incredible they are. So if this is an example of what can be done and, and what the potential is for a human being to do, and you drive this discipline and energy and curiosity, how can this be an inspiration? How can people get this? What, what would you say to someone who is really wanting to make a lifestyle change, maybe just not treating themselves well? What would you say? How do you, how do you get that through? It is ultimately about faith. It is ultimately that you got to believe you can do it and have the faith that it can get done and get as close to it as you can. And I think that that's as much as you can really say about it, right? I mean, it takes, it takes yeah. a huge, huge amount of faith commitment to accomplish something. And if you don't have the faith, there's no point in starting. Mm -hmm. First thing you got to believe that what you want to accomplish is really important and that will make a difference to people. Mm -hmm. And then there's the skill and an encouragement that there's a generosity uh, and a willingness to put your own ego aside mm -hmm. and allow what can be offered from the other person to come to the right. fore. Right. So you reach your goal and you get to it and sometimes you get to it and it's anticlimactic. Always. Right? Always. Sometimes you, you did it, but now it's over. And was it everything you expected it to be? Fortunately not. That makes right. the next one more important. Exactly. Yeah. So that was... It's always about the next one. Yeah. What about failure? So, so oh, something goes wrong. Oh, our favorite subject. Yeah. Something goes wrong, what do you do? What, what, uh, how do you... It depends on how wrong. <laughs> Well, I mean, the, maybe the first it's something thing, you really believed in. Yeah. Maybe it's a, uh, that's given. That's a given. That's a given. Uh, the, the first thing you got to do is figure out what your game is and keep it going. Uh, if you miss the basket, you don't stop and go. Oh, I missed the basket. Mm -hmm. No, you get the ball, run around to the other end, and try to keep going. Mm -hmm. You keep going. As you go, or certainly at the end of that game, you replay that game in your head, and you go, Why did I miss that fucking basket? Mm -hmm. And you also look at how fast was my pickup time? Mm -hmm. How long did I lose? How long did I let that missed basket cost me in my life? Right, right. As little time as possible would be the answer. Get on with it, you know. And it's very difficult. Uh, obviously, there's embarrassment involved. There's shame involved. There's you lose money. This is involved. Uh, you lose momentum. The whole nine yeah. yards. But it's either get going or quit.